75 years is a big birthday. You know, we, we understand that in our own lives. And when you hit a 75th birthday, it's a big birthday. Um, and for, for an organization, uh, it's a big moment. And for a synagogue community, um, a moment to, to pause, to celebrate, definitely to look back and to realize from where we've come, how far we've traveled, what are the, what are the, the ideals that we've taken from those early days and continue to use as, as guideposts, um, how exciting it is, the, the way we've grown, the direction of the congregation, the membership, and also these moments when you pause to think about wh where you're going to go. You know, so it's a wonderful opportunity. It feels to me very celebratory. I'm so proud of the congregation. Um, I just think we're in a wonderful place with our staff and the membership and everything. So what, what a great opportunity to acknowledge all of that and celebrate it. Uh, a, a Rube Levinson, a Joyous Offit, and a couple others, members of Beth the Phila. They were, the, uh, Rabbi Rosenblatt had promised them that they would have seating with their wives to give them another year. And so they said, fine. They wanted to, they wanted us, they were very much involved with Beth the Fella, wanted to stay there. A year passed by, and Ray Rosenblatt came to the group and said, I want you to know that I was turned down. They will not do it. And I want to apologize. My intentions were good. It didn't work. Rube Levinson, Offit, and several others made the big move. They said we're going to we're going to be a conservative congregation. I'm thinking about those original founders, you know, those original founders who who had a vision, and that vision has blossomed into this, you know, this extraordinary place. That's it's really not like any other synagogue I've ever been in. I feel like one of the things that I loved about Bethel from the first time I visited and, and experienced the community is that it's a community that is firmly planted in tradition and yet not afraid to take risks, to be creative, and to try new things in order to stay fresh and vibrant and compelling and to continue to attract not only the generations of people that are already invested, but the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. 75 years later, we're one of the strongest congregations in the world, um, which is incredible to be a part of, but just to watch how and what Bethel has done in the last 75 years to enable that to happen. It's really incredible. When I think about like Bethel at 75, I think about what's happened over the last 75 years. And I think like you can't help but parallel the synagogue to the creation of Israel and like what happens in the larger Jewish world and with, within the United States. I think that Bethel provides a source of energy, a source of strength, a source of support, and, and an added dimension to people's lives. You know, people tend to have, you have work and you have family, and if you're lucky, you have other interests. But for me, Bethel has been another source of energy and strength. I arrived during COVID. It was quiet. It was beautiful. But what I really uh, remember is how many people reached out to me through email, text, Facebook, welcoming me at a time when it was hard to do in person. And that was special. And that made me feel like I was home. All I can tell you is from my simple background of seeing what happens, I can appreciate it's just unbelievable. It is one of a kind, no matter what happens with the conservative movement, Bethel's in the class all by itself. It, it, it's just unbelievable. And the sponsorships are so beautiful. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, to see what, 
what people are doing, it, 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 it's, it's unbelievable. There is nothing to compare with it. So coming out of rabbinical school, I never would have thought how special it would be to have the opportunity to stay in a congregation for the length of time that then enables you to have these multi-generational touch points with families. Time, it goes by very, very quickly. And uh, looking back it's, uh, at the pictures of, of those days when I first got here, it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a long, beautiful journey. And I've been, had the freedom to compose a lot of music, which most of which is in most of the services, stuff that I wrote and uh, over, over the years was sort of adapted or, or and, and it's just been, uh, you know, it's like a dream job in so many ways. To watch the generations grow and then to move into a new chapter of their lives and to see the next generation do the same in the next. So I came here with two children. I now have three children. I remember, you know, my own kids being, you know, super small and getting so excited when the Torah used to process around the sanctuary, sanctuary and now they come back as like, you know, teenagers and, um, and they're proud. Like they are proud that this is their Jewish home. Proud, limitless, and unbelievable. And it is, it is. Um, over the years, through the span of the generations, come into contact with the family at some of the most important moments in their lives. And uh, it, it feels like a tremendous privilege um, and that's a, it's a real blessing. And again, if, if you don't stay at a congregation, if, if you're in a congregation, you know, 10 years and then you move, that, that doesn't happen because you just don't have the span of time. So it's been honestly one of the, for sure, one of the most special parts of my, of my rabbinical work. When I think of the future of Beth El, I, I like to think of maybe my grandchildren coming up. <laughs> And, uh, and singing on the bima, just like my kids did. My kids, when they were little, came and sang, and they still come and sing with me. Uh, and having thinking of my grandchildren up here singing, and thinking of everybody's, everybody's kids, thinking of all those future generations of uh, our mitzvah, and, and brises, and uh, weddings, and things like that. I guess now that I can reflect uh, I can say, gee, I'm, I'm so glad I was a part of this unbelievable journey.